I like it. I like the fact that you take notes. It's I, know, I got this one notes. Oh, that's oh. good too. I like it. Hey guys, how are you this evening? Hope everybody's well. We're getting ready to get started. We're gonna give you about 50 seconds. Get yourself ready. You guys ready? Ready. Are you ready? I was ready. All right, we'll see you back here in 50 seconds. All right, very good. Everybody having a good week? How about you? You doing okay? Doing really good. Accomplishing yeah. things, yeah. Week's what? going well. Yeah, what it's amazing. What is going on? Amazing. You've had a great week. Look well, at that. Let's just say a great day. Okay. Right. <laughs> How about you, buddy? Yeah, doing well. 61's not whipping you too not bad? Not too bad. You're doing okay? Yeah, I'm doing well. Can you believe he's 61? He's a no. good looking dude for 61, How isn't dark he? Come on, think about it. Your hair is darker than mine, brother, and you are way older than me. Let's just talk about that yeah, for a minute. I see my dad. Way just like this too. Really? Yeah, I can see the awesome. jeans. Yeah. That's yeah. good. You got good jeans. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> Levi. Got, got Levi Strauss. It's awesome. <laughs> you guys having a good week? I hope you're having a good week. Uh, if you get if you got a good week going on so far, give me a thumbs up, hit the little heart button. I want to see four or five hundred of these run across there. Let's see. Can you do that for me? Or maybe not. Okay. But they're they're a little I'm, I'm oh, a little man. ahead, they're a little behind. It takes, it takes a, a little while to come yeah. on there. Tonight we're going to be in, there they go, look at them going now, I'm getting all kinds of hearts, that's super fantastic. We're going to be talking out of the book of Acts tonight, as usual, we're going to stay in uh, chapter 19. How's the peanut gallery doing tonight? Good, 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 how about over here, good? Dessa's got her, uh, the, time, the point zero four font. font print in her Bible. Seriously, I don't know if you guys are aware of this, but uh, Dessa, how old are you, baby? How old are you? I know it's rude to ask a woman, but how old is it? 84? 84, she reads, uh, seriously, if it's, if it's a four, if that font is four, and it's more like really about a two. Grab the short. You couldn't, you, you maybe can't. can't oh, the, let me just say this. The text, she's got, it's a, a skinny Bible about this tall and about this wide, and it has two columns, and it just looks like gray on the column to me when no I look at no it. No glasses either. No, and she's not reading glasses. No, no, no glasses. glasses. No. But she has bionic eyes. Yep. So that's what happened. They they put some new eyeballs in some time oh. ago. Wasn't that what was going on? Okay. Pretty close. She had them worked on. Yeah. They, they fixed them up. So that's fantastic. Dewey, how are you doing, brother? He's got glasses on. He's like me. That's how are you doing, brother? See how he ever wears glasses. He ever wears, but he's got the font. He can expand the font. He's using his phone. He's, he's a smart guy. <laughs> Well, anyway, we're going to be in Acts 19. Dave is in Cuba. Cuba. So we're missing yeah, Dave tomorrow. over here. Back tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So pray for Dave. Uh, safe travels back and all that. Have you heard from him? Nope. Nope. Not, not expected to. No, I wouldn't no, think so. Not, not Probably Dave. not. Well, we're going to be picking up you... in uh, 8 tonight. Don, what exactly are you doing there? Well, I've got the NIV here, and then I've got the King James Version, and, and uh, sometimes it reads a little better in one than the other. Man, he's really prepared. Well, I have to keep He's you taking this serious. Wow. Yeah. You know what? There's nothing I love better than a spiritual guy that's serious about the Word of God. That's awesome. <laughs> Where I is mean, he? It's not, it's not his Bible, but he's serious about it. No, you can write in one that's, that's not yours. <laughs> that's good. I like that. I like that. All right, we're going to be picking it up in verse 8. Uh, we've read a little dab of this last week. If you guys remember, let me just kind of take us back. We have talked a little bit about Paul being here in Ephesus. And we kind of got stuck, and when we got stuck, then we talked for that a little bit about the Holy Spirit, and then we moved on for a little bit, and then we talked about, well, we better come back yep. and revisit that tonight. And so that's what we're doing, if you don't recall. If you do recall, awesome. Pick it up with us in chapter 19, verse 8. Don, you want to read tonight out of one of your fantastic... Read out of that NIV, is that... Yeah. Oh, that's not the 1986, but it's going to be all right. Read anyway. Yeah. It's all right. Verse 8, read on all the way through about uh, 22. And who also told us of your love in the Spirit for this reason. Are you in chapter 19? Well, no. no. You're really not. Okay. I'll read. How about that? Here, Here it comes. 
I thought I said 19 like that five hurt, times. Though. At least five, yes. At well, least five. I, I heard you, but I'm it's just the electronics. You know what if that you keep was? Keep talking, I'll be there. No, you know what it was? Quick. It's that it's that lead paint on those <laughs> school radiators, radiators in, in school back it's when. The truth, That's what man. I need to sue. <laughs> Here it is. Paul entered the synagogue and spoke boldly there for three months, arguing <laughs> persuasively about the kingdom of God. But some of them became obstinate. They refused to believe and publicly maligned the way. So Paul left them. He took the disciples with him and had discussions daily in the lecture hall of Tyrannus. Uh, this went on for two years so that all the Jews and Greeks who lived in the province of Asia heard the word of the Lord. Get that, all of them. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Verse 11, God did extraordinary or extraordinary miracles through Paul so that even handkerchiefs mm. and aprons that touched him were taken to the sick and their illnesses were cured and the evil spirits left them. Some Jews who went around driving out evil spirits tried to invoke the name of the Lord Jesus over those who were demon-possessed. They would say, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, I command you to come out. Seven sons of Sceva, a Jewish chief priest, were doing this. One day the evil spirits answered them, Jesus I know, and I know about Paul, but who are you? Then the man who had the evil spirit jumped on them and overpowered them all. He gave them such a beating that they ran out of the house naked and bleeding. <laughs> when this became known to the Jews and Greeks living in Ephesus, they were all seized with fear, and the name of the Lord Jesus was held in high honor. Many of those who believe now became, came and openly confessed their evil deeds. A number who had practiced sorcery brought their scrolls together and burned them publicly. When they calculated the value of the scrolls, scrolls the total came to 50,000 drachmas. In this way, the word of the Lord spread widely and grew in power. All who had, all, after all of this had happened, Paul decided to go to Jerusalem, passing through Macedonia and Achaia. After I have been there, he said, I must visit Rome also. He sent two of his helpers, Timothy and Erastus, to Macedonia, while he stayed in the province of Asia a little longer. That's a pretty cool passage of scripture right there, fellas. What do you think? Yes. It's good. Lots of stuff going on there. We kind of did read a little further last week. I kind of picked it back up a little bit, but that's okay. Um, really, it kind of picks up about verse 11 where God did extraordinary or extraordinary miracles through Paul. So anything that uh, you're seeing out of that, Frank, that you want to communicate? I mean, you guys are writing notes. I'm so, I just feel so ill-equipped tonight because I don't have notes to jot down. in your head. That's <clears throat> true, or my heart probably would be No, that's it. It's okay. It starts, yeah. starts in the head. It does. Go ahead. Woo, 80, 80 Pentecostal. Woo-hoo, 80 Pentecostal. What's that? Handkerchiefs. <laughs> 80, oh, 80 Pentecostal. Yes. I believe they're talking about the, the hanky wave. I think that's oh where... Oh, my God. Who is that saying that? Steve. Steve, man. <laughs> My stuff is not reading out tonight, so I can't see what's going on, but I like that, Steve. Very funny. All right, Frank, what do you got? Tell me. Like I said, there's, I don't know which one to start you with. You pick with whatever hit well, you. It's totally good. We're going to run. We're running. Go to Don first. I'm Don, what hit you? Decide. I'm, I'm not well, good this stuff. To, the, the, again, the miraculous was taking place, and I know that, that there's a, and rightly so, a debate in regard to the miracles that took place early on in Christendom, uh, and the the thought there is there was a lot of miracles to kind of attract and get the attention of the people, and uh, and and even to the point where handkerchiefs were getting people healed. Paul's you know touch them or shadow or whatever, and but but however it doesn't preclude the fact that there are miracles today, and I guess the question that always uh, is a curiosity for me is it seems like the third world nations get the miracles and ours is a little incognito here in the U.S. Yeah. It's not as open and free and, right. and the miracles just don't flow like that, it seems like. 
Yes. At least I haven't been exposed to them. Yes. And um, so is it because of the unbelief, strictly the unbelief, or is it because the, over there that is the drawing card, the medium, or the media is word of mouth, miracles, this is happening, come. And we have media here. We have a way of spreading it. What, what do you think about that? I well, think before, me. before, before you go, I want you to go, but hang on. What do you guys think? What's the, what's, let's get you involved tonight. What, what is your thoughts on why was there so many miracles or it appears that there was so many miracles there that were, you know, so much more grand, extraordinary. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, extraordinary miracles. Why then and not now? Or, do you believe that, no, it's happening now, we just don't hear about it. What's your story, what's your take on it? Write it down, guys, we wanna, we wanna share tonight. Now, Frank, go, I'm, I'm ready for you. Um, the reason I think is, <clears throat> when you're, especially, you're, you're contrasting the, the Western against the Eastern yeah. continents, I guess. In modern day, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, not just they, the, they not just understand, the place. They understand the spirit realm better than we do here, because they have to more than we do here. We have it so we have it so easy here, so comfortable here. We don't have to depend on the spirit as much as they do over there. And it's a lot more accepted over in other parts of the, of the world than it is in the United States. Because if you go back to, I'm just gonna throw this out there, you know, witch hunts and all that sort of thing. Sure. They got rid of that. They think it's just kind of crazy. But over in the third world countries, that's, that's a real deal. I mean, they have the witch doctors. So they're more, they understand that there is a spirit. The spiritual realm is more real to them than it is to us. When you start talking about the spiritual realm here to people, they're just like, you're nuts. Just, I don't believe that stuff. I don't believe in the devil. Yeah, well, it's just a story. But if you take that message over to the third world country, they understand it because they actually see it happening. Yes. So then I think that's why we don't see enough miracles here because we don't think it's we don't recognize the spirit working as much. Yes. And we don't think that the devil's real over here, but he really is. I kind of don't know if I explained it. It's good. It no, I like no. what you're saying. What do we have? Anybody putting up anything? Nobody putting up anything? With well, you guys got to help out. You can't, there's just three of us tonight. You got to help out. Um, so let, let me, I'm just going to talk with what you said and kind of try and talk it out. Um, so my question then comes to you and asks this. Is there then as much spiritual... Uh, is there more demonic presence there than there is here? I don't know if there's more, but I think it's, they deal with it differently than we do here. And they actually take it head on. They understand it and they recognize it there than we do here. There's a lot of demonic influences going on here in the States. I mean, it's all over the world, but. It's just more open there. I think it's that... more open because more, they understand it more. Yeah, no, do, I'm, I'm no, not no, sure no. that maybe the word understand is. Not. Yeah, I'm working I think with they that. Delve, to I think out. they delve in that arena more than we do. They, 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 you know, they get in there and, and kind of mix it up with this spiritual things. If like you that. don't have anything, I mean, you know, the whole idea of selling your soul to the devil is a real deal. It is. You know, I mean, it's really a deal. You, if you have nothing and you don't have any way of getting it, it's possible if you don't know Christ that you could just walk your way right on into that. So to get whatever it is that you have need of. So I think that there's some, I think the lack, there's just the strict physical lack that they have in the third world country that causes them to have to rely spiritually more heavily on things mm -hmm. than they would here. The other thing is I think that it is more open there because they rely on it more. I think it is more um, visible and more open both sides of the thing. Um, and it was at that point. There, obviously, if you have enough sorcery that it winds up to a total of 50,000 drachmas, the scrolls, just in this one city, uh, we have some serious demonic practices going on. I yes. mean, there, we have yeah. some serious, high-level demonic activity in that location. Now, uh, you know, you go back and all of the gods, lowercase g, um, that were that were in Ephesus. I mean, clearly, if we go on to read, we're going to find out that uh, Demetrius, right, who made silver shrines mm -hmm. uh, of Artemis, got 
ripped off because at the those in the way because they were got in the way of his making money. That's right. Mm -hmm. And so there's there was a reality here that I think that people made their money off of that. It would be it was a um, you know, it was one of the one of the big ways of making yeah. cash. The lady that we saw that uh, had the familiar spirit yeah. Yeah. that Paul rebuked yeah. Yeah. Uh, that wound up causing them to get in trouble. This was a way of income. So it was a way of life for people to make money. The necromancer, all of those kinds of things that happened well, there. Well, e even in this read that we read tonight, uh, you got folks over here uh, casting demons out. You, you, that practice is going on, and they decide, you know what? Let's throw in this guy's God, because yeah. you know he looks like he's getting some results. So they start doing it in the name of Jesus, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. and these kids and the demonic responded. They're Which, like, "Whoa!" Yeah. By the way, look at who these kids are. These kids happen to be the sons of a Jewish chief priest. Mm. So it's not like these kids don't know spiritual reality, right. or at least that there is one true God. They've heard the Shema, I'm saying, at least once, right? Yes. Uh, hero Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord our God is one. They've heard that at least mm -hmm. once, and yet here they are delving into this stuff, not knowing anything, jumping in. So you're right. There was some level of this that was just, there was an openness and a, what was the word that you used? A knowledge that, an understanding maybe of it that that, that we just don't participate in. I think that's one piece of it. The other part for me is clearly that Jesus couldn't do many miracles because in his hometown because of the lack of faith. Yeah, yeah, and so, yeah. so because of that, I think that I think that our United States, though it is a nation supposedly under God, um, built on God, I'm not buying that the nation itself has faith as yeah. a whole. Yeah. I don't think we're a faith-filled nation as a whole. Uh, just talking about that for a moment, that's a nerve there in that I, I have, I believe that we have become very cavalier with the things of God, uh, very familiar. And so we, we pass, uh, you know, we look over and we, we pass judgment on that one and, oh, well, then I'm not going to that. And, and I'm so, I'm so tired of them doing, and, and so we very cavalierly uh, pass on God and there's not a pursuance of the Lord for the for the seeking of God for obedience to what Jesus told us to do that's not really the traction for that in the average Christian's life is not there and I, I uh, and I can only reference in times past when I saw a great deal more of that and now it's just it, it's just there isn't a hunger for that it's almost like a well osmosis is okay, I'll go to church and it'll rub off and I'll be okay. But because of that, the unbelief is there, there's no faith as you pointed out, and I just, I just don't think God's gonna move miraculously in that environment. He didn't in his own hometown, and so what makes this any different? There's also a lot of teaching out there, a lot of different denominations that poo-poo this stuff anyways. They don't teach it. Yes. They teach against it, a lot mm -hmm. of it. Listen, I'm you don't have to go to other denominations. The Assemblies of God, there are churches all throughout the AG that do not allow the Holy Spirit of the living God to move in their meeting time. They right. absolutely will not allow tongues and interpretation to go forward in their meeting time. Prophecy, mm -hmm. no dice. We're not doing that. It's too messy. We won't do that. That's your own personal stuff. We don't do that here in the meeting. And if you think I'm kidding, I'm, I was the church planting director in the uh, the Nebraska district and we had guys coming in from all around the United States and it was amazing to me all the big names how they did not allow it so it's interesting to me I don't know how yeah. it came to that Rach who do we have I know somebody said some stuff in there I can see some of it tell me um, Emma Manis Doing said hey Emma Manis Doing my she sissy said, I love you she said we I think that the we think that there are still yeah, try that one more time. We think that there are still miracles today, but maybe not like this. Maybe not the magnitude as in Jesus's day. Yeah, gotcha. Who else? Anybody else? Okay, it's good. Um, well, part of that is like I say the teaching that's going on, and we got so educated. I think that we got we get all these 
I mean, we got doctors. What do we really need well, Jesus' healing for? Well, not just that. I'm, just, I'm talking about the religious folk. Well, I they am They got too. so educated. They, they educated themselves right out of what this really means. You know, I've, I've heard some guys talk about that. The, the miracles are done for today. He goes, go all these apologetics. He, I mean, they just line by line just break it all down and they dismiss they, it. Mm -hmm. They dismiss a lot of what's mm -hmm. going on. If Jesus me, Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, then I, I don't understand Why do we how can you say that this stuff today, isn't for today? today. Yeah. It just doesn't make any sense. Right. One, if one he's the, the same. Things, one of the things that, that you do personally, Sid, that uh, I tend to agree with for the most part. In <laughs> <laughs> you know what you do? Sometimes I agree with it. The other time, not at all so much. Just let me know when that you do. Just let me know when you do. Don't tell me when you don't. I, don't I guess because that. I don't wholeheartedly go there myself, but... <laughs> You, you stick to the, the Bible as your source. You, you, you kind of keep yourself from trying to read someone else's uh, point of view or idea or insight. Or, and it keeps, I believe, it keeps a more pure work going on with what the Lord wants to do in you personally. If I start opening books too much and, and am just filtering these books, so many ideas begin to filter in. Some guys have gotten some incredible things by this and some by that. And you're thinking, wow, which one is right? And, and it tends to water down mm -hmm. your own experience that you dug out with God mm -hmm. in his word that he made real to you. That to me is where, uh, to whatever degree I have that, that's where I've got it is, is me and the Lord and the Lord's showing us a little something and, and then confirming that word to me. And I'm like, okay, I can, I'm going to, that, I'm cinching that into my life. That's mm -hmm. real. You ever, mm -hmm. when you read the Bible, do you ever just go like this, open it, read, read, flip, read? You ever do that? If, if, if that is your way to read the Bible, you need to stop that, <laughs> that because that's a mess, number one. Um, if that's all you do, that's better than nothing. But that's not how I would ever help you to get further along in the faith. Because that is exactly the same as having 55 different guys telling you something different mm -hmm. all over the map. Mm -hmm. they're, they're, these books are here for us. They're the Word of God. But they need to be put in context and they need to be understood in context. Otherwise, there's no understanding them. Otherwise, it's just this mismatched stuff that's everywhere, which is what happens when you pick up other books. Yeah. You're, you're getting a guy in his 27th year of revelation with the Lord and that brick, if you could imagine a brick wall, I'm building down here on year three, right? I'm laying the foundation on year three. He's given me something from year 27 in his building, not in my building. Mm -hmm. Don't even know if that's even in gonna be in my building. My foundation may not even be that. That may never even be there for me. But he's given me that. Now I'm trying to jam that in on year three of my revelation. That's not possible. So the believer just becomes this mixed up, messed up mash of information. And you do that with 30, 40 different people now, listen to me, you got a mess going on. Yeah. And this, to me, and the thing that Don talks about, and this yeah. is, I'm going to take a second because he's brought it up. This is the book. There is no other book. It's a, it's a compilation of 66 books, but there's no other book to read. I, I, I've written books. I help people with books. I'm not saying you should never read a book. I'm saying that when it comes time to study, when it comes, comes time to gain revelation for your life, when it comes time to determine which way to go. There is only one book compiled of 66 books of which you get your information. There is no other, there's no other source. Don is a nice guy. At the end of the day, if he, what he says does not line up with this, I'm a nice guy. If at the end of the day, what I say does not line up with this, it, it, it's wrong. Mm -hmm. I don't care how nice Don is. Yeah. I don't care how smart yeah. and, you know, incredibly handsome that I am. It doesn't, because it's true. It doesn't really matter. It's got to line up with this. Well, how do I know if it lines up with this? Well, you got to read it. <laughs> you see, you have to read it from start to finish. You need to take a book and finish a book. You need to go line upon line. That's how you do it. Otherwise, it's just this mishmash of stuff that you can never really put into. I mean, imagine, imagine having a ticket to go into the theater and you just 
you walk into this one that's playing this movie and you sit down for five minutes and you get up and you go into this theater that's playing a different movie and you sit there for five minutes then you get and it's a 22 uh, theater uh, 22 movie theater and so you go through that at the end of the day what story do you have you got a mess is what you got you got little tiny bits and pieces of 22 different stories well, it's the same thing. You take 22 different teachers, you take 22 different books here and try to read five minutes out of it. That's just never going to work. Does that make sense? It does make sense. And, and there's scripture for where the Holy Spirit uh, is it, one of the, one of the uh, works of the Spirit of God in your life is to lead you into all truth. He will lead you into all truth. As you're exposing yourself, the, the Holy Spirit of God opens those scriptures to you more fully and quickens them. By quicken, I mean he, he witnesses it to your inner man. You, 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 sense, like, the, you I, sense the yes on Yeah, that. I understand mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. I, I see what he's saying. I get that. And Way if to get out of that But if you're shopping, yeah. If you're shopping around, reading books and, mm -hmm. and watching different programs, it's, it's kind of like wildfire. You're, you're like, oh, that, that looks really, uh, let me have a little bit of that, a little bit of that. A ton of Christians doing it, man. Yeah. A ton of Christians doing it. Wow. And so you lose that intimacy with God as he's bringing you along in your faith. And I like the analogy of the brick wall, your brick wall versus how many other brick walls. Let it go. Yeah. Because God won't leave you without a teacher as you're going through this. And even if it's someone that you trust bringing you along, at least he understands where you're at and can help you, you know, someone who's discipling you in the faith. I'm going to take one more step and, and, and really rag off everybody. It's also the reason that the problem of running from church to church to church to church to church to church is a problem. You need to find a church, get in, shut up, sit down, open up, listen up, and then get up and start doing something with that body of believers. The idea of you going to find a spot that you like, that works good for you, that's got all the programs that you want, that's good for your kids. Listen, you need to be somebody that's bringing something to this deal. So you need to get plugged in, you need to stay plugged in, you need to stop this shopping and hopping business and get in with a body of believers and go through it. You know, it, I mean, it's, it's crazy, it's like, it's like, uh, it's like being married these days, you know. I don't like this woman, so I just jump and get me another one. Well, good luck to you. About five minutes, you won't like her. You'll have to jump and get another one, and then you're going to be you're going to be paying out, you know, money on every front. You're going to be poor the rest of your life. Let alone the fact that you've spread your soul all over the earth. It, it's craziness, and we allow this. And the the pastors never talk about this because you know we're afraid we're going to aggravate somebody. But listen, I I have a platform here tonight. I want to tell you. Get in a family of faith and, and make sure it's a good one. Make sure it's one that preaches the living word yes. of the living God. Yes. The entire thing doesn't yes. say, I want this piece, I don't want. Don't get in a group of people that's doing kind of what you're doing if you're church hopping and shopping, trying to find the pieces that you like and getting rid of the stuff you don't. No, get in a place where it is 100% the Word of God, and we judge everything, our own personal life, according to what this Word says. Mm -hmm. Now, when I say that, everybody, oh, I don't want to be judged. Listen, part of, the, part of the problem that we've got in the church today is because we, we have people saying, don't do this, don't do that, don't do the other thing, don't do the other thing, and everybody's trying to, that loves the Lord, listen to me, that loves the Lord, they're trying to stop do that, that and that, only because somebody said that they should stop doing mm -hmm. that, that, and that. That's not how this works. I want you to be clear. You do not have the power to stop sinning unless the Lord himself, by his spirit, quickens to you that it's time to get beyond that. And when he does, now you have every power and every right to get beyond that. You need to get into that. I'm talking about Romans chapter 8. You need to read it because it is by the Spirit we put to death the misdeeds of the body. Now, if there is no Holy Spirit, how are you ever going to put to death the misdeeds of the body? You're not. And so yeah. consequently, we have the church, somebody saying, the pastor from the front of this church saying, well, y'all ought to stop doing that, y'all ought to stop doing that. Listen, there are things that that are of the flesh that we ought to not participate in. But at the end of the day, me telling you what you need to do is a waste of, a colossal waste of energy. If you're not listening to the Lord, 
if the spirit of the living God is not living in you and directing you and guiding you, I can tell you a thousand times, you will have no power to overcome this. That's right. But as soon as the spirit says something to you, you will be empowered to overcome yeah. that. And I mean, be done with that forevermore. Just mm -hmm. that simple. So, yeah. so even, even with that, all the way down from reading other books to hopping to church to church to um, trying to be good and spending all of our life trying to overcome things that the Lord clearly at this moment is not even dealing with us about. Right. Right. And, and you say, well, what, I mean, it, it would be a good thing. Well, listen, you, good thing and a dollar won't get you a cup of coffee over here at Panera. So a good thing's not it. We're looking for God things, you yeah. see. Yeah. And that's governed by the spirit mm -hmm. yeah. of the living God. And so if you're not connected with the spirit, you got nothing. Anything out here? What do you guys have? Talk to me, Dewey. There is, to some degree, an aspect uh, all through the times we've had revivals here and then 100 years later another revival in 100 years and back in the 70s there was a revival of the miracles and gifts happening mm -hmm. at that time since we're older we knew 25 or 30 churches where these kinds of miracles were pretty commonplace mm -hmm. and so you have to say at that time God was giving people an opportunity but it didn't spread because they I guess in some degree said this is ours yes well, that's immediately it shut off you're right hmm. instead yeah. of saying we're going to teach everybody to do that which is what yeah. we're supposed to do yeah and they didn't do it so that sort of died down but we have that happening in in our church here we've had prophecy we've had word of wisdom and uh, s certain of the gifts from time to time and certainly some healings but it's not prolific Mm -hmm. But when the whole congregation gets together in one accord, like it 120 people that said they were of one accord. That's right. And everybody reads enough of that scripture that you're talking about to really believe it. Then God was going to just bring his power and say, it's okay, good. go get them. That's good. good. Well, it goes back to that thing that we were just talking about, about not sticking in one church. It would it, be like, I mean, you know what? We would never do that to our kids no. in, in, in school. I talk to people because we move all the time, right? Different school systems because we move across the states at God's will. And people always thought, oh, you can't take your kid out of school. You can't take your kid out of school. But they'll shift churches every 15 minutes <laughs> and never think a thing about it. Yep. But you wouldn't take your kid out of uh, the eighth grade and transfer them into a different eighth grade because it'll hurt their learning. What do you think's happening in the, the church? You're missing out on your learning because you're not sticking in one spot long enough to actually become a part of that body and learn. It's, a, it's what Don was talking about earlier. This is, a, this is a lifelong endeavor. This is a journey. The, great, the mm. greatest part about Christianity is this. I'm never going to stop learning. Yeah. I'm never going to. Yeah. Even when I get there, I'm still going to spend yeah. the rest of my years looking at God. I mean, the, you know, the, the elders, the 24 elders, they bow down in worship. They get back up. They see a whole nother facet of God. They cry out, holy, holy, holy. They bow down. They get up. They see another facet of God. They cry out, holy, holy, holy. They bow down. This has been going on for, you know, yes. eternity. And that's what, that's what we're looking at. We, there's no stopping learning this. There's yeah. no, I've been saved 25 years, I'm done. Do I, did I, am I stopping you from saying something? No, I don't want to stop. No. Okay. No. Don, anything? I'm just, uh, you know, going back to the miraculous, uh, I, I believe there's several things that hinder uh, us experiencing the miraculous things of God uh, and also including God's own wisdom and how we would deal with a miracle. How would we, how would we treat it? Would we deify the miracle and, and God say, why would I do that? Why, why would I do that? Here, it was attracting the people to, to come what? to Christ. To, to Christ, not right. to their church. No, no. So they <laughs> Which is kind of what happened in the 70s, yeah? Come to our church. I they mean, wanted to hear the truth. They wanted, why in the world is this happening? Where is this coming from? Well, they would turn right around, and they didn't teach miracles. Notice, they taught Jesus. Correct. And the side effects, some of the side effects were people getting healed, demons being cast out, so forth and so on. Today, we're so sensationalized. Uh, just turn your TV on and, and look at you know the, the superheroes and all the things. 
we, we want to see the big deal. We want to see, and God's just not going to play that game. He's not, he, he's not interested in that. He's looking for those who would come to him as he's wooing them. So he's not going to ruin them over some mis miracle over here yeah. that we deify. Yeah. You know, God, God is God. But if, but I noticed Sunday, even here at, at our gathering here, right here in this room, there was a, uh, uh, a togetherness that began to take place. You could feel, literally feel the spirit of God uh, rising up as a whole, not as, not as an individual, somebody mm -hmm. doing something that was powerful, but there yeah. was a, because of the unity of the spirit of God and what was happening, and I believe in that, there's a lot of miraculous things going on. It doesn't have to be a miracle per se, but there's Still a lot of miraculous. healing and health and yeah. things going on. Back in the church, go back to when we had that big deal in Florida. You know, people, people were running to Florida to see the miracles. Who produced the miracles? Yeah. Who was that again? Was that, was that the, those guys down in Florida produced that? No, that was the Lord. So why do you need to go to Florida again one more time? I'm just a little lost on this whole, you're, you're going to go to see the mirror because you've never, why don't you just search, why don't you seek after the Lord? I mean, the Lord is the one doing the mirror. What, what are you gonna, why are you going to Florda again? And the reason why they did see the miracles is because they were seeking the Lord. That that's time. how that happened. That's how there. it happened. But well, I'm going to go down there, I'm going to get that anointing and I'm going to come back. That anointing is anywhere that anybody would seek out the Lord. That's not like some special thing that you have to have somebody lay your hands on. It Say, did happen. We took a bus load down there, and when they came back, we had a service, and even the children had, had on that bus load been down there, would just raise their hand and somebody would be healed or, or slain in the spirit Yeah. for but, a time. Yeah, well, it's a lot like the youth things that we have. The kids come back on fire, but that doesn't last. If you don't, yeah. if you don't learn to find the Lord yourself, right. yeah. if you don't get that from God, again, you can get, listen, you can read a book. You can watch a movie. You can get a good revelation from somebody, but that's not yours. Mm. Mm. That's not yours. You, but, but listen to me. But God's Spirit has gifts for you. So He wants you to have gifts. He doesn't want you to try and snag them from somebody else. He's got gifts for you that are specific for you. And those, the Bible says, He never takes away from us. Right. So if you ever figure those out, which it isn't hard to do, but if you ever figure those out, those are yours forever. He does not give and then take away. Yes. He's not like that. So those gifts will be yours, and for the rest of your life, you'll learn to walk in those. But you do not have to run after somebody else's stuff to find <clears throat> that. That's just, again, it's a, it, it, you, you may have kids going to the youth group and coming back all jacked up. I'm telling you, it won't last 15 minutes. It just won't. 90% of the time, it won't last. It'll be, they'll be hot for six months at tops, more like six weeks, and then that'll be it. Yeah. Rachel, you can talk to that. Dakota, you can't because I never let you go. But Rachel, you can talk to that. And anybody that's been in youth group knows exactly what I'm talking about. And anybody that's been in an on-fire church knows exactly what I'm talking about. If you took that from there and put it over here, it will not last because that doesn't belong there in that way. It might be the Lord, no question about it, but the Lord has a different thing going on. We, we need to perceive bodies as like individual bodies. Like God gave you a gift, mm -hmm. he's given me a gift, and he's given you a gift. Now, if you were a body, a local body of Christ, that thing would have a function just like your gift would be. My local body would have a function and your local body would have a function, but the church never looks at it that way. Mm. We all start wearing the same scarf we all start dressing the same way we all start singing the same worship songs we all start doing the same little stupid dance it's ridiculous there's no wonder we don't see miracles because we're searching and seeking the the effect more than we are the one who creates it and that's what's going on in the church so to answer my own question from way back earlier if there if the reason we don't see miracles is because we're way busier chasing the effect the 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 symptom than we are the one who is actually able to fix all of the problems that we have. So it's interesting to me. Occasionally you see somebody though that in the midst of that will come out and they'll say, Lord, God's calling me to do this. No question. But he starts off saying, God is calling me That's to right. do this. Not, oh, I like it, I'm going to do it. 
Yeah. yeah. So then you can bump in. You can bump into things. I'm not saying certainly. And then be clear. I'm not saying that those times are not valuable to be in. I'm just saying there's no reason to get in the car and drive it. There's just no reason to waste your gas. Jesus is right here. You got a book. You got some knees. Good. Read the book. Get on your knees. Pray. You'll find him. I promise. He says, if you seek me you will. with all your heart, you will find me. And I will reward those that earnestly seek me. Amen. Now that, it doesn't get any better than that. You don't have to run. You don't have, you, look, you'd be the sons of Sceva. You might do some super fantastic stuff. But honey, that ain't your anointing. And the next time you jump out there on your own, Somebody gonna beat you down like a <laughs> redheaded stepchild. You'd be running out naked and bleeding. <laughs> and God's and God is no respecter of person. He's not. Of this He's not. No. He loves all of us the same. Isn't that awesome? And it's, so, and it's available to anybody. Yeah. Because yeah. He doesn't anoint you, and doesn't anoint Don or no. anybody else. That's right. He anoints. He anoints. Everybody has an anointing. That's he's right. no respecter of person. He wants us all. At well, that the spirit, spirit of God. Yeah. It's, the, it's the same spirit of As God. The spirit will. And, yeah. the truth, and the truth is, for you, is the same for me, the truth of the Word of God. That's the reason that if, if, you will, if you'll plow yourself into believing God, he says, if you'll draw close to me, I will draw close to you. It doesn't say, well, if you, if you quit smoking and drinking, or if you, if you straighten up, I'll draw... If you'll begin to draw close to God, he'll draw close to you. The, the thing is, we want to get it in some easy method. We want somehow for well, it to rub off. It's not even easy. We, just want to, we don't even want to do anything. No. At this point in time, we're so stinking lazy, we don't even want to do anything. I That's just, why people sit home and watch the tube and watch the preachers on TV because they don't have to do anything. Yeah. Sit back and eat, eat their... Drink the coffee and the cinnamon buns, and well, we're guilty. Come to of church. Come on, we're 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 all guilty of relaxing. We 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 live in a country. We 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 live in a land that is so blessed and so maxed out with stuff that it's so easy to relax. And and we're rich compared to the rest of the world. Oh, we yeah. are rich, That's a fact. and and so we don't now hear me. We really don't need God. We do want to go to heaven, but. You well, know. we need salvation. Well, we need salvation. After and, that, thanks, I got it from here. And if I get something really <laughs> bad, I want people to pray, and I, right. I hope something happens. I'd like happens. to get healed. But, and that's what you were saying, Frank, yeah. over in the third world. They don't have any of that. They yeah. have God, and so they press in, and you see some things happening over there. But our plea, I think our plea tonight is, uh, my goodness, what better thing do you have going on in your life than to have a relationship with God. Amen. What better thing? What is it that you've got going on that yeah. would be better than well, being with God? I, you know, listen, I, I'm 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 binge watching some Netflix oh. stuff, and it's fairly fairly important that I get this done because if I don't, I mean, this is this is good stuff. I need to watch this. I mean, I'm talking to me, y'all. I'm not talking to you specifically. I'm talking to me. I binge watch from time to time. Listen, let's uh, let's end it up because it's like uh, 8:45. We could talk forever. I've seen us do it. And we're not going to do that tonight. So God bless you guys. We hope you learned a little with us tonight. And listen, if you don't have a, a way to do a daily meditation, check out Enlighten. It is found on Sid Manus or this. No, it's found out on what? On Facebook right here. That's right. Find it. It's right here. In the morning, but it'll at least get you started to connecting each and every day. It's first good thing with the too, Lord. Doing it is. that, and wake up every morning. Just it's first little, thing you do. It's a little dab of work. It won't hurt you. I promise. Make you super special, super spiritual. It's good. It's good. Love you guys. We'll see you next week right here.